How do we sort and store our magic collection? Last week's episode with Peter Many was a hit. Peter gave us an inside pro look at how magicians should organize their life. And on this week's episode, we're continuing the discussion on how we personally sort and store our own magic. Welcome to Magicians Talking Magic. My name is Ryan Joyce. And my name is Grimazing. Thank you so much for tuning into this week's episode. It's been a while, Joyce, since we've done this together. And it is awesome to catch up because we have been flowing for weeks with interviews, um, dynamite episodes. We have had some of our highest downloaded episodes in the past couple of weeks. Um, but we have we have a ton to catch up on in this episode before we dive into how we personally store our magic because we know talking with peter um not all of us are we wish we could be like peter you know i wish i could give up some of my magic i wish i could be as organized i feel like i'm fairly organized though and i i know all magicians we all have different flavors and tastes and joyce you have a whole different scenario of magic that you store that is quite large so I think it's oh, going to be fascinating God. to share that later in the episode. But Emotional we have baggage. S- <laughs> we have so much news um, and things to catch up on. Joyce, do you want to start off with um, what's going on kind of in do- Discord right now? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Well, we wanted to have a, a continuation of our virtual discussion because, um, well, a couple of weeks ago, I, I posted the results from our survey on the virtual magic and I've been so jazzed to uh, to hear what everybody else thinks about virtual magic and this idea came up where we're going to host a panel discussion and we're going to all our discord uh, users we've been fiddling and finding a time so we've got it set and this will be for tomorrow Thursday May 13th if you want to join us in discord you can get all the details in there the link is in this podcast description and we're going to just have an open conversation about virtual our experiences what we think for the future like all of that will be discussed magic's going to come up it'll be great so if you want to join us we'd love to have uh, your thoughts and hear your thoughts so join us uh, by following the link in discord i'm excited for this um that also it happens at 7 p.m but it doesn't matter if you perform virtual shows we want to get your take on virtual experiences altogether. It's going to be an open discussion from the magician perspective because it's magicians talking magic. And we know a lot of you have experienced virtual magic, whether you've seen a show um, or maybe maybe you perform, we, you perform. But it, we're excited to share all the perspectives. We know a lot of our Discord members have dabbled in a little bit of both. They've dabbled a little bit of performance and a lot of experiential um, events as well from shows and conventions and things like that. So this is going to be a great discussion. If you've heard our book club episode, You are familiar with how this might flow. And if you haven't checked that out yet, that's another big event that's going on currently in the Discord is our monthly book club. We call it monthly. It's not, it's kind of like monthly ish. Monthly ish. Yeah. yeah. But this month we are. It's it's keep reading monthly. And then every, every couple months we'll do an episode. And I'm looking forward to this next one. We've got a lot of us bought the book from our local magic dealers, which is the big point here. Um, and make sure to support your local magic dealers. And we are all set to, in the next couple of weeks, record an episode on our book, which was Verbal Magic by Juan Tamares. So if you haven't uh, got the book yet, you've still got time. So go ahead and purchase, start reading. And uh, soon we're going to be... There, oh, here we go. There it is. We're going to be going through uh, this book and our own experiences with uh, Antiquity. So join us again in Discord to get more information on when that's going to unfold. But um, pick up Verbal Magic from your local magic dealer and let's get reading. I have been really enjoying my Verbal Magic experience. I've completed the book once now and I'm going back through a second time. And I'm actually focusing on, I'll admit it, I'm focusing on what the Penguin downloads are, the ones that Dan Harlan has chosen to use as a download and see what they're like in the book. Because uh, Colin pointed out they're a little bit different in the book, which ne- which means when you get those Penguin downloads, and I'm not, I don't know why I'm shamelessly plugging Penguin things, but you get the Dan Harlan touch in those downloads too sometimes. Um, I'm, I love the book clubs. Talking Me about too. clubs and, and things, Cam Jam, Joyce, it happens tonight, and this is another 
huge one. Yeah, this is going to be wild. Uh, it features two incredible guests. And when we were brainstorming with Cam, we were trying to figure out like what what do we want to talk about and what topics are interesting and and who would be the you know the best people that could provide the most value. And when we approached these two, we sort of we never expected how perfectly we'd all come together. Let's put it that way. So our guests are Paul Draper and Jeff McBride, who are going to. Uh, talk about taking the virtual experience to the next level. Uh, and it's going to be uh, just an incredible night. And this is, of course, tonight, Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, May 2nd. Join cammagic.org. You can uh, RSVP and I'll get a link right away. So cammagic.org slash events. I know I'm producing a big time virtual local community event. I'm doing a political debate which is going to be kind of exciting. And I'm incorporating a whole lot of things like countdown clocks and unique elements like that. However, I know Paul and Jeff always have a ton of knowledge when it comes to virtual magic and presenting. Uh, I hope, I think my event is supposed to wrap at eight 30. So I'll be tuning in late. Uh, I am really, really excited to catch some of this really pumped for that because these cam jams, if you haven't tuned into one yet, they are slowly building to be maybe some of the best virtual experiences yet. I mean, Steve Valentine, a whole discussion just on wallets, Chip Romero, traveling through his house, which is a museum of illusions from not just Doug Henning, but he had a chest of just Larry Jennings belongings that he just kind of tiptoed through. He has a library of 1600 books or more. I don't even know. His energy he, is infectious as well. Yeah. And I, so these cam jams are something that you do not want to miss. And they're also usually, they're not recorded. They're not re-aired. It's a one in a lifetime experience, which is, you know, like magic. That's what these cam jams kind of resonate with that experience. You have to tune in. It's something you don't want to miss. Um, yeah, we've uh, got more stuff in the Discord as well that we haven't really chatted about. We've got a, a couple new features in there, uh, folks, so make sure we keep saying it. Discord, 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 but there's a lot happening with a great group in there, so join us in Discord. Um, yeah, we, we, we in we the Discord, we... fancy as well. Yeah, we spruced it up a little bit. We're going to be adding some new sections. If you're in the Discord and you have any comments or suggestions that you want to add into the group, just go ahead and, and comment wherever you like. Uh, I've been enjoying kind of enhancing the Discord, but David Johnson of Kingston Magic Theater, huge plug to King Kingston Magic Theater. If you're in the area when David is doing shows in person again, be sure to check those out because he offers a really high quality magic show. Uh, he he's really suggested because he's part of a couple other Discord groups too, to create a magic jam. So we have that. There's an open magic jam room. We sometimes announce when we'll be in there. But if you ever want to host your own magic jam, you know, just give a little shout out in the Discord, and we'll see if we can get people to gather in there. Uh, it's been a lot of fun to just kind of jump in there and, and chat randomly. Uh, you know, Colin comes in from the park usually, which is fun. Yeah, if you're listening and going, what on earth is Discord? Don't worry. Uh, that is exactly the same position we were both at about uh, six months ago. Um, and so Discord is simply just like a messenger app that's just around the podcast and magic discussions. And and, and so it's, don't be intimidated at first. It looks like there's all sorts of uh, new and unusual things. But when you boil down to it, it's just a message app. It allows us all to talk on topics. And so we've got a whole bunch of different features, topics on the left. So you can talk about the episodes or uh, we've got a whole virtual magic or just magic general discussion. And we've got those video uh, ones as well, those lounges, which is for the jams. Oh, so cool. So check that out. Link is in the description. I'm loving Discord, man. I really am. It's it's a ton of fun. One of the best things in our Discord is the magic challenge. And we have actually only done this once. And we need to do this again. But in magic challenge, the goal was we would take an item and we kind of brainstorm ideas of a magic trick and from our very first magic challenge yeah. joyce you created a trick that you can now download you can purchase a download from your favorite local magic dealer through murphy's airlock joyce you have to give us the yeah the and the name airlock. is all you thanks a, a trillion for that I, I yeah i didn't for a while know what to call it but yeah this is an effect that sprued out of that challenge that's right and the idea that day was to create magic from amazon boxes and items and like just the shipping kind of genre and so as we were all sort of tinkering around that it it 
came right in the middle of the jam. So um, that's I, another reason why I keep saying these discord, the discord is so essential, but like all of that spawned from that. And we've, so anyways, it's basically you push a card, a selected card, it could be signed. It could have information on it, it could be ripped. It could be whatever. And you push it right in the center of one of those air bubbles, air cushions, as they call them. Um, and it's super visual. And so it was really, it, it was a fun piece of magic to work out. Cause it's, it's, a new genre, I guess, like uh, there really hasn't been magic with this kind of uh, item and it's so relatable and it's super visual. And so in the effect, I, I, you can actually send it off. You can actually forward them a box with their cards sealed, you know, and inside of it is that air bubble. So anyways, 10 bucks, your favorite magic dealer, super fun uh, and a really fun visual. You can just tack it on to a piece of card magic you're already doing. All right. Check that out. I'll Joyce. put some links in the description. Yeah, and this is your second creation too, Joyce. You are quickly becoming a um, a, a new creator, I guess, in the magic world. I mean, you're not new in creating, but it sounds like you're going to have a dynamite lecture for all of us down the road with all these dynamite virtual creations and everything. One last thing that I wanted to comment on the Discord is think about it like Teams. It's kind of like Microsoft Teams, how that works, where you can chat and create little groups and everything. But I think the advantage that we have and the the best example of this is Airlock, is it's a safe creative space. You know when you go onto your other favorite, so maybe not favorite, but social media platforms, and there's a, a sense of this is exciting and this is ugh. This is exciting and this is oh, oh no. Did you see what, and it can quickly change your kind of chemistry, but I find when I go into the Discord, it's always good vibes. It's like a safe place. And I think when we you have that, you get more creative, positive ideas coming out of it, just like Airlock. Um, so if this sounds like something for you, jo you got to join the Discord. It's just a little app if you've never tried it before, or if you're already on Discord, because I know other magic communities are in Discord too. Check out Magicians Talking Magic Discord. We're having so much fun over there. Yeah, we and we keep up to date, you and I, every day virtually through Discord, but it's probably been two weeks since we've actually face-to-face -face chatted. It's This is how busy things are, and that's uh, what really is a, a, the advantage of it. And in that time, you've you've pumped out three really killer interviews uh, on the podcast uh, that I wanted to triple snaps. Wow. Um, the, the topic's amazing. I got to say, uh, Tyler and Daniel were both um, amazing. The mindfulness and magic. Yeah, well, you actually incredible. You did um, one of the interviews too with Peter, and these have actually been some of our highest downloaded episodes with Daniel Greenwolf, Greenwolf Peter Twombly, <laughs> Tyler Twombly, and Peter Many. All those names are a riddle when you put them together. Um, but mindfulness and magic. If you haven't gone back to listen to that episode, I've actually listened to this episode the last specifically thirty minutes when Tyler talks about gratitude and being mindful and present that last 30 minutes resonates with me so well even when you listen to the whole episode and he starts talking the up he's in a grateful state this whole episode he's talking about the joy of watching an old vhs tape learning uh the sylvester pitch i've listened to the episode way too many times i'm a huge fan of tyler right off the bat from this thing and yeah triple snaps to triple tyler snaps. incredible and episode Go back and listen to it because it is a really good one. Um, I feel like we need to bring him back on and continue the discussion there too. I think he's got a lot of valuable information. And I also know from talking to him too, he's an untapped resource from other podcasts. Yeah, I believe that was, is was that his first podcast with us? Yes, it was. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's such a win. Oh, well, we're so thrilled. And listen, yeah. uh, if you have a discussion, an idea, a topic that you want to hear on the podcast, um, well, you know where to to, to tell us uh, links in the description. Uh, and one of the ones we want to continue the discussion, we just wanted to mention um, Illusionarium, which is this uh, amazing um, fusion of like magic and experience based walkthrough style entertainment. It hasn't opened yet because of the COVID situation, but we actually got a preview of it firsthand that we're eventually going to have a video um, to share and we got a chance to meet all of the amazing not all of the cast but a lot of the, the, the people over there and and um, they did this last weekend an incredible Mother's Day 
live stream. And uh, it, it, we're going to leave the links in in the episode so that you can watch this. And when it comes out, make sure to support them. That was a really great special they did. Yeah, it was so amazing. And it featured friends of uh, the show, Cameron Gibson and Sean Watson and Neil Croswell um, and Aaron Faberman. It was a really well-produced special. I don't know if you can still watch it or if the stream is now vanished as they say, but it was a really good thing. Make sure you're following Illusionarium because they're putting out a lot of quality content. And when that does open up, and if you're in Southern Ontario, you have to go mainly because of the secret chamber that no one can talk about. Uh, and one of the ones we want to continue the discussion uh, was with Peter's episode last week, which was like, I got to tell you, like I, I, I've known Peter forever and a day and I, I, I know this about him, but even seeing further, I learned seven new layers watching him explain it all. And I, I, I hope everybody got some good key takeaways from some of the how and the whys. I'd love to know what your big takeaway with, with, with Peter was. So I'm a huge Peter fan. I really wish I could be as organized as Peter is. And I think, so I've had, I've been lucky enough to share the road with you and Peter and I've sat in the car with Peter and I got to ask him so many business questions. And he talks about that sending the elevator back down quote. And I'm glad he found that it's not Kevin Spacey, by the way, too, because that would be so <laughs> tragic. But um, it's so true. If you pick his brain, he's willing to tell you everything. And the, he he gives you the important information, the things that most magicians never tell you. He'll tell you about rates, business. When you, he gives the best lecture in magic, in my opinion, that everyone should see. And maybe we should even have him come on. We should probably host some sort of lecture, maybe with Peter about this. But he, he describes the business end of things when you charge someone, how you break up that money so you're set for taxes and you're set for life and you're treating this like a business and not just like a fun and games. We're just doing magic. Um, but this goes right down to his prop organization. Yeah. You know, this is his belief and it goes right down to the organization of all the tricks. My yep. favorite takeaway was honestly the envelopes or the bag, the zip bags, the see-through capability of that. I didn't realize that I've been storing stuff forever in like similar pencil case things that Peter's talking about. Not being able to see inside is really a bummer because you got to open up. You're like, is the marker in there? Having it and the card system that he has, everything, all of it. I think if people have listened to the episode, it's worthwhile to go to our YouTube and watch the episode because at the end, Peter actually shows everything to, Oh my goodness. His case, Peter's case yeah. is a magician's dream. This is the magician's dream case. Oh my, you have to check out the video just to see how that case actually functions and works. It's unbelievable. Yeah. My absolutely the case is is wild and audio and everything built in. You can check out all that. Peter really gives a nice view of it on YouTube, so do follow the links uh, to see that. But my key takeaway was the the story of him missing the show and being able to call uh, and ask his wife to grab, you know, this 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 and put it in the bin. And I mean, can we all say that? Can we all say that that is the level of organization that we have in our, our own life? Probably not. Uh, so that was no. th that really hit me, and I think that is worth going back and listening uh, just for that. So uh, I was curious because there were so many in there, uh, but that one was the one that sort of hit me hard. Um, so, well, today we're going to sort of give our perspective, uh, like because. Um, organization is something both of us have a little OCD level of with like you've taught me a bunch on the digital side how to organize and, and so like we both enjoyed having a decluttered aspect to our lives right um, and magic it tends to be like you have a lot of stuff and this is there's some areas I'm super organized with and there's some areas I am out of control. So we're going to share some of the things that we do well and ideas uh, with you here on the podcast uh, on this episode. Pardon me. So what how, how do you keep your org magic organized? What do you? Yeah, I took a big leap in magic organization this pandemic, obviously, because we had the time I used to always you know a case the magic these cases behind me are my showcases and each case would have each show in it 
Um, and much like Peter, I'd put things away, but it would kind of live in the case for me because I knew I could grab this case and that had that show and this case had this show. That's the way I like to work. Everything is in a vintage suitcase of its own. And I know the brown case is this show. And sometimes each case switches depending on the, if the props are changing. Like the blue case used to be the kids show, but it became the corporate show because of my comic book mind reading trick that I do comics on. Um, but I took a serious dive into organizing my tricks that I had started. And I think it's a Jeff McBride idea is putting all your tricks and i feel like i read it on magic cafe or it might have come from show doctor and i feel confused and weird that i can't remember where it came from but put everything into a bag essentially what peter was doing so i just grabbed ziploc bags in the house freezer bags all the different size ziploc bags and i put everything into that so each trick has a home in a ziploc bag and then within i bought some bins large plastic bins smaller plastic bins even smaller plastic bins that are see-through that so one bin is kind of like family magic, you know. It contains the ropes, the rings. Um, some of these things just still live in their box too, right? I still have my linking rings, Royal Magic linking rings from when I was, I don't know, fifteen. My eight-inch linking rings, and um, and they've been welded back together where they, where they've been broken and everything. So they still live in their box and jumbo-sized decks. But mo- you know those other things, they go in big Ziploc bags and they all get sorted. Or and then I have a thing for you know, mind reading tricks, mentalism tricks, because they're all kind of like packety things and loose cards and stuff. So those are in Ziploc bags or using uh, packet wallets. I've become a junkie for packet wallets, you know, the little to hold tricks. And I think it's, um, yeah, it's TTC. TCC, I think is the company. They make these kind of like luxury style packet wallets. So if you have some really favorite, um, you know, packet tricks that you're doing, or that you want to keep safe all the time, I've actually invested in purchasing a bunch of them. And they offer them in different quality. Like I've gotten different styles that they make, I guess, based on whatever materials they have, I guess. So I have different ones, but these hold all my most important tricks and I can keep these organized in kind of like a playing card thing. And then for coins, I've put all the coins in different pouches from headphones and travel organization things or watch bags, you know, little, uh, and different sets of coins are all in those and those are in a see-through bin but everything's all in see-through bins and then i have a couple large storage container which holds kind of costumes and props like large stage like elements i guess if that makes sense that's me in a nutshell and then the one last thing that i'll talk about which is this is a crazy one and i realized this during the notes that i have to deal with this problem is and i'll show you this is a visual behind me here lit in blue this is a little cabinet a nice little cabinet display unit this just holds playing cards that that needs a moment (laughs) (laughs) wow yeah so there's legit like a theory 11 drawer there's an illusionist drawer there's a custom deck drawer. There's a bicycle deck drawer. There's a mark deck drawer. There's a um, a building magic trick. Drawer. There's this is all playing cards. You should in Discord share how many decks you think you've got, um, and you listening, you can let us know how many you think you've got as well. I have a handful, uh, but nowhere near what you have. Um, most of mine are from like different countries, I would grab a deck at the airport or something because I wanted to have a, a smattering of 52 different locations. So I didn't have, man, that's, um, I, I'm curious to, yeah, well, I'm curious. I've never thought about how magicians store their, like their cards. Cause those are collectibles basically, right? Like those are things, those are showcased kind of things. That's so how, the way I was treated. Right. I don't really, yeah, I don't collect playing cards anymore because it kind of, it's a, it was a problem. Right. And, but I'm, this was my mentality. <laughs> it was like, well, you need two, right. Cause you'll open one and then you need a second. Well, you need three because you'll open one. You need a second one. If you need to make a gimmick for that first one. Well, you need four because maybe I like the deck a lot and I want to use it again and it might not be available. So I should get six. <laughs> Half a brick. <laughs> yeah. Every t- that's it. That's what happens. And I'm not proud of it at all. And it's terrible. However, I do know I have some really highly collectible decks of cards. What does that mean? Not much. And I need to, this is something I want to deal with is the, is the playing card collection. The magic tricks I do want to keep on to because I feel like after watching things like Valentine and Chip Romero, 
some of these things never do get made ever again. I bought the newest version of Thought Transmitter. You know the John Cornelius effect? No, I'm not familiar with it. Thought Transmitter is a little wallet that's a peak device that John Cornelius developed like ages ago. And there's been, I think, three or four versions of it. The original, which is the best, and then three remakes, which have various not as amazing quality to it, right? Because it's just not, you know how things are made. They used to be made a little bit better. And my original one, which still works, is still better than the new one that I got. So that's, you know, when you want to hold on to a magic prop for those weird reasons. But with playing cards, when it comes to that stuff, I'm okay. I got to deal with that personally. Anyhow, enough about me. Yeah, well, this is a difficult topic because, like, my magic collection is like road cases and things. So I, I certainly have a ton of magic, um, lots of cards and things that I don't have any awesome tips <laughs> to provide <laughs> sorting because it's chaos in some places. Um, but here's what I I've got a lot of um, thoughts on like keep everything together when we were in touring for example i learned something interesting just to, to give a wholly different perspective on on organizing and sorting when you think about it on that industrial scale um i uh they often the touring companies make their road cases in consistent sizes so that even though it might be four times larger than the item that's going inside of it um because of sorting and and putting it in the truck um, they know that two cases wide or three cases wide will fill the width of the truck kind of a, a formula. And so I, I thought there was some total value and consistency in the items that I store magic in. So when I buy storage boxes, I usually will buy like, you know, a, a bunch of them and the, and then each box. So downstairs, they're all see-through and I'm pretty sure it was Costco, you know, where I picked them up or something like that, or Ikea, something um, and each one will in it will will be topic focused. Like I've got one bin that's just sponge, and you know I I've do got, too. <laughs> yep, there you go. Yeah, and one bin that's like silks and things. I I really haven't thrown magic out all of my life, so I've got all this stuff that's like irrelevant. And so I've I've even got a box of like I will never ever in a thousand years do anything with this. I should probably you know, donate this or something kind of a, that, that scenario. But, um, I think my personal opinion is like the books is what I put at the top priority for me. Like I think books are, and so I definitely have all my magic books in one spot and all nice and organized by size and things like that. Um, and, and my, but my magic props and, and things I'm, I'm getting now to the phase where I'm getting all in one one room and I'm starting to sort through and put all the cards and things in, in one area. This is why this the last couple episodes have been so intriguing because in this whole process to learn a, a better way of doing it. I want to just share also, I found um, for the, like I do a lot of video stuff. So I've got all these like little gadgets and things that like, what, how do you sort and store those? I found on Amazon through a YouTube video I was watching for a video topic related, not magical related, this jewelry container on Amazon, a jewelry, pardon me, hanger. It's basically like three feet long uh, uh, with 80 see-through package or uh, pockets on it. Basically there are about the size the pockets are about the size of a deck of cards. I'm going to, I'm going to see if a, a deck of cards will jam in there. Um, but really helpful for seeing a whole bunch of various little things that, you know, uh, and storing them and you, 15 bucks Amazon. So I'll make sure to put uh, a, a sh- pardon me, I'll show the picture um, in, in Discord. So, do, yeah, it, all sorts of various options and things out there. Um, but currently, as we speak, like I've got a, a, two garages filled with <laughs> magic <laughs> in large boxes. Uh, oh, boy. Um, and a collection. Of- but that's uh, that's the reality of being someone like someone like you that does illusions and toured on cruise ships and things. That's just the reality of the situation. If there's people listening that want to dive into that realm, you know, there it is. Yeah. So I have two things that I want to, yep. I want to talk about before we wrap here one, before we actually dive into digital organization of magic, because I have a unique thing that I don't think I've even shared with you before what I have going on. And then the other thing is, do you remember 
back to young Joycey, when you first started magic, how did you keep and store all your magic tricks? Oh, I was definitely OCD about that with instructions and everything. I had, I definitely had a, one of those filing sorter cabinets that I put all of the instructions and I did show reports as well. And, <laughs> and I we're all in that same location. I did try for a while to do the database thing, but eventually over time, you just, it's just swamped with them. In fact, before I had the filing cabinet system, I used binders, notepads, and I would um, affix the instructions to a piece of card stock and hole punch it so that each of those instructions could fit in. And I, I still have those somewhere. My goodness. Um, but then like eventually you buy a thousand tricks, you know, like <laughs> it's a lot of instructions. <sighs> I remember, I remember keeping everything. I had a, a product. I might've talked about it before. It was my first show box. It was a cardboard box that a vacuum cleaner head came in and I had sponge painted it blue with stars on it. And that held all my first magic props that I got from, you know, a couple from the magic kits that were like better props. And then the first things from the browsers, Dan or Morrissey's magic. So, you know, the 20th century silk blendo, a dancing cane was in there. I had gloves to flower bouquet. I remember, and I remember that flower bouquet had no chance being palmed in my little child hand. <laughs> and I couldn't even figure out how, like, how is someone supposed to do something like this? And I had a bang gun because I know as a kid, you just like, Same. no, you can buy that. <laughs> but, Same. and then all the instructions actually right here, this is a little briefcase above my, this is my grandfather's briefcase. I never got to meet my grandfather, but this was like his office briefcase. And that still holds all the instructions and all my really old school packet tricks in it too. Like the Nick Trosts and the color Monty and things like that. And the other organization thing I use for packet tricks is a binder for like actual trading cards. Um, you can put all your packet tricks in there if you have a lot of them and you sure. actually can see on, you can see on both sides. The only thing <laughs> Make sure you never flip that thing upside down. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, what a nightmare. Uh, yes. Huge oh, nightmare. Oh, what a nightmare. I also threw this question to the Magic Cafe um, asking about all this stuff. And there was um, uh, uh, somebody gave some advice that we've already chatted over. But, but there was a picture that I saw. And that was the three, what is it? Three by four four envelopes manila envelopes are the exact same width as a deck of cards and so you can write and they stick up above a deck of cards so you can actually write what the box is oh. and have a full filing system of your gimmick decks with just those envelopes that we're all familiar with so yeah that was a, a winning idea that might have been reddit i saw that actually now that i think about it but well worth uh in purchasing a nice big box of those cards or the envelopes that is a home run idea because i have a ton of those envelopes that i've had and they've actually like gummed themselves shut you know because they've oh, been sitting around too long perfect use so why not use them for this perfect use for this oh my goodness that's really so oh, digital storage i want to mention this um because we all and peter brought this up too this is a huge fear, I think, for all magicians is when you buy a digital trick, like you got to make sure you download it because that site's not going to, you know, will it exist in some format later? So I on a, on two hard drives because I've mirrored the I mirror the backup every now and then. But I do have a huge folder that's like magic dump. But every now and then I take it and it goes into my magical arts library and organized by magician is every download I've gotten from them or a PDF document oh, or any digital great. file. And I actually, I don't even, I don't know when I took the time to do this. It was years ago, but I actually took all my downloads, all those things that you'd receive, you know, you receive so many weird things from friends, you have things on DVDs and I organized it by magician. And I put the, I just, and it was easier. It's really easy to do it on a Mac. Cause if you have all your magic files on your hard drives, it's the spotlight feature. You just type in that magician's name. It shows you all the versions of that trick that you have on all your hard drive. And then it's easy to like delete the duplicates and all this stuff. And then I make sure that hard drive is mirrored. Cause that is some important material there. You know, did you have to take the vast quantity of Jay Sankey downloads and subcategorize those? Yeah. I subcategorized them as, um, 
Paper clipped from the 90s. Paper clipped <laughs> from the 2000s. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, I think this has been a solid episode. I would I would be curious to know if everybody else has a specific or secret storage methods. You can let us know in Discord if we've missed something. This has been awesome. Anything else left to say? I think all I want to do is we've been plugging it this whole episode, um, but you got to join our Discord because we have a virtual panel happening tomorrow on the 13th, but we will have more virtual panels in the future. So join the Discord. And we also have our book club going on talking about verbal magic. But tonight, Joyce, tonight is very important. Sure is. Cam Jam, you got to join in. Cammagic.org slash events. Well... Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Magicians Talking Magic. My name is Ryan Joyce. My name's Grimazing. Shubblasm. Tidoozle. <laughs> <laughs>